So we have a sample over here. And we're going to do the same thing we just did over there. So all we do is first we need to make sure that we have our analysis tool pack and we can do this. So you just hit File, Options, Add-ins, Analysis Tool Pack. Great, it's there. We'll check it. You just want to make sure that's checked right here. Solver you don't necessarily need to worry about, but you want that Analysis Tool Pack. So check the box. Mine already is. Hit OK. You're good. Then we hit our Data tab right up here. We go to Data Analysis. This will be added in. Then we will go all the way down. Usually it'll start up here. We'll go to Regression. Hit OK. You're going to pick a couple of different items. This will normally start out blank. Something like this. You'll pick your Y output or your Y range. And the Y is what you want to predict. That is your excuse me, your dependent variable. So you're going to just highlight this. So we go to the column title and all the way down. It's locked, great. But we have the label in there. So we'll check labels. 95% is the standard confidence interval. That's No one's going to argue with you ever on that. If someone says, I want to see 99, sure. Check it, hit 99. Regardless, X range, what are our variables? Those are right here the X's. So we'll highlight those. They also have labels. Great. Output range. We want this to go, I'm going to put it right here. Yep, R2, just like we had it. And we'll just hit OK. Then we will just widen this so we can see a few things. As we're looking at it, first thing we want to look at is our multiple R, R squared, adjusted R squared. What these are is kind of beyond the purpose of this. It's just to get us to uh, knock out a regression prediction that we can be confident in, stand behind. If you have one variable, your R square is probably okay to use. And above 0.90, I'm usually pretty happy with that, and it's difficult to really improve a lot of that. That's a lot of, you're, you're testing the variability, how much this model supposedly predicts. Above 0.9, you're in the money. Adjusted R square, if you have multiple variables, this should be lower. It is lower. It factors in just different things, various statistical tests. If you have more than one variable, though, just look at that adjusted R squared. That's what we have here. Standard error grade observations. You want to have at least 30, which is why we had to have, um, add Arthur average here. Then we have our various other things. So we have our significance, our F stat. Great. This, as long as it's above this, good. So that Awesome, so good, good. Then we have this, the p-values. That's where we're going next. We want these to be less than 0.05. So we're going here. Is this 0 0.05? Yep, that's less, 0 0.05, uh-huh, 0 0.05, yes, good. So these are all great predictors of um, yardage, fantastic. The intercept is a little different. That's a little beyond the scope of this, but that's really all we're doing on this. So now we're going to build our basic forecasting model. Let's say we need our intercept. And all this is going to be is the intercept plus, open our parentheses, we'll go with attempts times, that's the attempt coefficient times, and we'll say this is attempts. So we'll put that value in later, plus, the coefficient for first downs times, we'll call that here, and I forgot my parentheses, so that would have been an issue. So be smarter than me. Plus coefficient for the longest run times, and I did it again, that one. Close that, close that, and there we are. So we get this output. But we'll label these inputs. And our first input here is going to be the attempts. So we'll say attempts, first down, long. Let's say a running back has, let's check it actually, let's verify with Arthur Average here, who should in theory be around what the regression is. How many attempts does he have? 189, we'll call it 190. 
So you can't get less than one each time. So that says he should, in theory, get 325 just on that. But we have to factor in the other two. First downs, what does Arthur have? He has 46. 46. And what's his longest run? We've got 50.96. We'll call that 51 yards. Right here, this model predicts that Arthur Average will have, throughout the season, at the same point in time as everyone else, uh, as it is right now anyway, um, 857 or 858 yards, let's call it. And what is he as average? 862. Not bad. Okay. Then let's change it up again. Let's say he gets 200 attempts. 879. However, if he gets 200 attempts, let's say he has, mm, oh, let's call it 49 first downs. And let's say his longest run, he broke a 54-yarder. He'd be at 913 yards. And there you go. So you can do that with different budgeting techniques. That is going to be your most straightforward way. All you have to do is remember, you need a good adjusted R-squared value if it's more than one variable. R-square if it's a single. But that's simple linear regression. It's a little different if you're going to ordinary least squares. Make sure your F uh, stat is greater than your significance. Make sure your p-values are less than 0.05, and if they are, great. If they aren't, I'm going to run through that problem right now. So we're going to do the same thing. Data, data analysis, regression, OK. Our y range is the same thing. That hasn't changed a bit. The x range, the only thing we're going to do, oh, man, well, if these three variables can supposedly predict 92% of the, uh, the yardage that they'll run for, Let's throw more in there. That should be great. In theory, yes. In practicality, absolutely not. So we're going to go here, and we're just going to expand it all the way over to this. We'll take everything that isn't yardage and isn't the number of games started and age and position. We're going to put it right over here. So remember, these three attempts, first downs, and long are the longest you run. <clears throat> We're all great predictors when you use just those three together. When you add more in there, you would think that you're going to get a higher value here. It's going to predict more of that model. Not the case. So we'll put it all here. Hit OK. We go out here. Yeah, OK, our F value is still better. I mean, that's good. That passed. R square. Multiply. That's awesome. Fantastic. That's amazing. We've got over 99% of the variability explained, except when we get to our p-values. Well, it looks like every single one of these, except for fumbles, is going to be a terrible predictor of yards. It will not be statistically significant, so we'd have to throw them out. And I guarantee you, well, I don't guarantee you, but I will bet you that if you looked at the number of fumbles someone had, you probably couldn't get a lot of data on how many yards they were going to run for or did run for. So that may be an issue there. Uh, but when you have something like this, you just need to drop variables. So in this case, I've just kind of tested through this data. You play around with it, and these three happen to work because that's the first thing I did. You try it with as many variables as you think matter, then you drop one, rerun it. Drop two, rerun it. Drop three, rerun it. And after I dropped four, voila. This is something I would be very comfortable going to anyone in the company and defending. Uh, something that really you're going to need a trained statistician to have them say this is terrible. But regardless, it's close enough for 90% of business work, and it's actually a pretty damn good predictor. So, if you've got any other questions, let me know. Got a bunch of other videos we'll come out with and leave me that comment. Uh, tell me what you want to see. Hit that subscribe button. Thanks. See you next time.